Hello everyone. I want to take a minute before we get into our message today just to say thank you. Thank you for watching our videos, watching our content. Thank you for supporting us. Uh, thank you for sharing these videos with others. Just wanted to put that out there before we get into our message for today. Now, let's get started. fairly aged Ozzy Osbourne penned this gritty little track in 2002 entitled Eat Me. Now follow me on this today. He wrote the track after being inspired by the true and gruesome story of Armin Mivas. Armin Mivas put out an ad on the Cannibal Cafe in 2001 advertising for a well-built young man who desired to be eaten. As a result, a young man named Bernd Brandis answered the ad and he consented to be eaten. Eventually, Brandis was killed, he was chopped up, and he was eaten by Army Mivas. He was eaten piece by piece, bit by bit. True story, I kid you not. Now, this sounds absolutely grotesque. It sounds nasty, it sounds yucky. I mean, who? Who would want to eat another human being, right? It's just not flavorable, it's not sensible, and quite frankly, it's just disgusting. And yet, heavy metal singer Ozzy Osbourne found some humor in this, so much so that he wrote about it. The song is called Eat Me. Eat me, a second helping. My meat is nice and tender. One bite and you will be sold. Take me for later. I have no expiration. My blood will never go low. I'm on the menu. Are you hungry? Eat me. Now, Eat Me is not just a song, but it's also the title of a 2018 film that is just as grotesque and just as sickly. But getting to our point today, Eat Me are also the words of our Lord Jesus in the, in the sixth chapter of the book of John. John chapter six, verses 53 and 54. So Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink the blood, you cannot have eternal life within you. But anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise that person at the last day. What is Jesus talking about here? Eat my flesh? Drink my blood? Really? What is this? I mean, are we talking cannibalism or an age old truth? Are we talking eating his flesh or feasting on his word? Are we talking drinking his blood or swallowing his teachings? Jesus has a conversation with his followers here about bread and manna and about how he was the true bread and the real manna from heaven. The Bible says the people started arguing. In verse 52, their response is this. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Meanwhile, Jesus says, I tell you the truth. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you cannot have eternal life within you. He says, to the, he says this to them several times. And then we hear their response in verse 60. They say, this is very hard to understand. How can anyone accept it? Jesus continues to teach them and yet they refuse to follow Jesus's teachings. Verse 66 says, at this point, many of his disciples, talking about the crowd that had followed him, the crowd that he had just fed on the previous day with two fish and five loaves, many of these turned away and deserted him. The response of this crowd was to abandon Jesus, to desert his teachings, to leave him, to quit following him, and to go about their own way. At this point, Jesus turns to the 12 men closest to him, his apostles, and he asks them this question. Are you also going to leave? Peter responds for the whole group, and he says, Lord, to whom would we go? Your words have eternal life. You have the words of eternal life. This is what he says to Jesus. 
And so they choose to remain, to stay, to abide, to follow Jesus, even when they don't fully understand it. In essence, they said, if we have to eat Jesus, that's exactly what we'll do. If we have to drink his blood, they were ready to drink the blood. So this leads to our question for today. How do we respond to the words of Jesus? How is the world responding to the words of Jesus? And how are you responding to the words of Jesus? The crowd in John basically says this, your words, your teachings, it's too hard for us to understand. And when they say this, they're not saying, Jesus, this is intellectually complex. This is too hard for us to understand. But rather, they're saying, Jesus, the moral demand of following you is more than we want to bear. Yeah, in the original language and culture, they knew exactly what Jesus was talking about when he said, eat my flesh and drink my blood. But they chose not to do it. The moral demand of what Jesus was asking was too great for them. So they chose to push away from the table. They chose to wander aimlessly. Rather than feast on his word, cherish his commandments, indulge in his moral demands, they chose to walk away from Jesus altogether. Peter, on the other hand, responded as we all should. Peter said, Lord, where can we go? Y'all, where can we go? If the moral demands of Jesus are too great for us, where can we go? If they're too great for you, where will you go? It's easier to just push the Bible away and say we don't understand it and say it's too hard to follow. It's easier to do that than to choose to digest what Jesus has for us. We can say it's too complicated for us to swallow, but is Jesus calling the world? Is he calling us? Is he calling you to cannibalistic nature or is he sharing with you an age old truth? Christianity demands that we surrender our will, our way, our notions, our right and wrong to the way of Christ and that we live up to the highest moral standards God has set for us. The truth for every age is that the intellectual understanding of Christ is not what keeps us from following him. Rather, it is our unwillingness to die to our own standards, our own way and take up God's way. Die to self and follow him. Today, Jesus still says, eat me, eat my flesh, drink my blood, become one with me. And so today, the question for you is, will you choose to eat the bread sent down from heaven? Will you choose to follow Jesus's demands, his commandments? Will you choose, unlike the people, but like the 12 apostles, will you choose to stay with Jesus because where else would we go? Let's pray. God, our Father, we thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your power. Thank you for this message. God, make it clear to every hearer of it that you still call us to be one with you. You still call us to eat your word, to understand uh, your love for us. You still call us to be one with you. And you're not asking us to be cannibals, God. You're asking us to join you. Just as Jesus said, I and you and you and me and we and the Father, we become one. God, even when we don't fully understand this, help us to choose as the apostles did, to abide, to remain, to stay with Jesus. Help our response to be, yes, Jesus, we will continue with you. We pray this prayer in the name of the one who came and died for us. We pray it in the name of your son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. I realize that perhaps maybe this, this lesson might be a little bit difficult, but here's the deal. It is not our intellect that keeps us from following Jesus. It's our desire to do our own thing. So today, I pray that you and I both will decide that we want to remain with Jesus. We want to respond positively to his his statement to us. If that's you, if you decide today, yeah, I, I want to follow Jesus. I don't fully understand it, but I want to be a part of Christ. If that is you, please feel free to text us at the number on the screen. We invite you to become one with Christ and we invite you to do life together with us. 
Thank you for joining us today.